Okay, let's get started. Um, hello and welcome to the weekend section of the Java EE programming course. We're gonna I'm gonna go through the video. This video is gonna go through the uh, syllabus and the course requirements and everything that's specific towards the weekend section. And then uh, we'll take a five minute break. And then we'll start in with lecture one. And then we'll do lecture two. And then we'll do lecture three. And then we'll do lecture four. And we'll, have, we'll probably have a lunch break before that. And uh, probably get out. Uh, I want to say about three or four at the latest. Uh, we'll see how it works. It depends on how fast I go through the material, how many questions there are, stuff like that. We're actually going to hit a lot today uh, because <clears throat> this class meets only three weekends in the term, as we are all aware, and we're going to meet on the Saturday and Sunday of all three weekends. And uh, this is for everybody who is not sitting in the room right now. You will all have to show up to the next two. Mandatory. Because you have to show up to three, excuse me, two of the three weekend sessions required. If you do not show up to two of the three weekend sections, you will not pass the class. You will receive an F. And regardless if you've taken the final exam, regardless if you've turned in all of your work, regardless of everything, you must physically show in the classroom two of the three weekends. I don't know how much more clear I can make that. So you guys sitting here today, you have one down. So you can actually miss one now if you wanted to. Um, and you, uh, the other thing is you also have to show up in person because you're going to be here anyway for two of the three uh, to the final exam. So you guys, uh, you guys who are here today um, have it made because this is the first weekend. It's usually the easiest one of the entire term, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, I encourage you to show up to all three. But, you know, life, life permits, things happen, you know, so jobs and stuff like that. Uh, but that is the attendance requirement uh, that is mandatory. And now when you're here, make sure you also sign the roster uh, to make sure you do a good credit because I'm going to take that roster and compare it. And that roster that you're signing, and the attendance that we're taking, is what how I'm going to determine whether you actually physically showed. And we're also going to do a physical count of the students and a physical count of the names on the roster. So don't send your friends to come and sign in for you. And when you sign the attendance roster, it means you're here, which means I want you to be here. If you leave the room, we're going to cross your name off the roster. If you leave before the session shows up, or if you show up five minutes before we're done and you sign the roster and you leave and you go home, that's not the point. The point is to actually show up for the class. Okay, now that I'm done drilling you on the attendance requirements, <laughs> let's talk about the course. And that's all I'll say about that because uh, I just want to make sure it was extremely clear up front because when you come back and say, how come I got an F in this course? I don't want you to, you know, think that I didn't tell you or warned you. So that's the first thing I mentioned in the start of this course about how attendance is required. All right, let's talk, let's talk about the course. Let's move on. Um, so the course itself is covering the Java EE programming language. You guys, most of you from sitting here, I think I've seen you in my uh, Java object-oriented programming language class. Excellent start uh, because I'm not going to teach you the Java programming language. This is not object-oriented programming in Java. Instead, what we're going to do is take the basic core Java and extend it with the Enterprise Edition. And starting with lecture number one today, I'm going to tell you all of the different pieces and components that we're going to be learning. Up, up most important, the first thing we're going to start out with is JDBC, and today we'll actually be building JDBC applications. So I see some of you have brought your computers. Excellent idea. And next time you show up, also bring your computer. If you don't want to, don't worry about it. You don't have to. But if you do, you can follow along, download everything, install it, watch the examples run, and it'll help you actually do the assignments for the course. The next uh, thing that we're going to look at, we'll probably look at it today as well, is the use of sockets, uh, TCP, IP, IP, UDP, networking technologies is what you're going to get in this particular weekend section. Uh, the next one, we'll be doing RMI and servlets and uh, looking at Java Bean technology. Uh, the good thing about what you guys have that, uh, well, actually both of them, both sections have it. I have two sections of this class running. I have one during the weekday and one on the weekend. So all of the lectures are recorded, as you know. So you can go in through and you can listen to and, and work ahead and go and look, into, look at the weekday section lectures if you want to and use those along with the weekend and supplement because this will be at a fi fast accelerated pace because I only see you three times and the last weekend is really just the final exam stuff so I'm only getting you for four days so I'm going to cram the entire course into four days essentially. Uh, it'll be long days but uh, 
in between, it might be too fast for you, so you might want to actually go and look at the weekday stuff. It's a little slower. Um, but anyway, for uh, this particular weekend, we're going to get through JDBC. We're going to get through our, we probably will actually even start tomorrow RMI. Uh, you won't see any examples, though, probably until the next weekend. Um, and um, we'll, we'll look at servlets in the last weekend as well as Java being technologies. And the assignments are all on these different technologies. And these different technologies are all what's part of the enterprise edition in terms of the terminology. Learning objective. The students will learn how to use the Java 2 platform EE edition, which means you're going to need to install the EE edition. Um, Multi-tier distributed applications. Learn about the... We'll talk about Corba a little bit as well in this class, although it's not... Uh, you know, it's not core Java, but it's a core, but it's a technology dealing with enterprise edition uh, platform middleware. So, and, and I'll talk about Corb in the first lecture as well. Uh, so it'll be a great opportunity uh, to get familiar with the platform itself and the tiering and services and web, web environment. You can go ahead and read through the learning objectives on your own. And... Uh, <coughs> Optional materials. I do not have a textbook for this course, and um, some students really like that. Some students don't like it. <sighs> some students like to go out and buy money. I, excuse me, spend money on textbooks. I don't know. I'd rather buy shoes or something. I don't know. Textbooks don't really throw me that much. Instead, however, you may buy shoes or whatever you want instead of a textbook for this course. And you're lucky because the reason why that is true is because there is no current textbook at any one moment of time, really, for Java. Because Java it goes from version 1, version 2, version 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. In fact, the latest EE version that I've got installed is 1.7. There's no book out. In fact, there's no JDBC drivers for it either yet right now. It's too new, uh, which means if you want to you know, use the newest stuff, some of the APIs change. The course stays the same, and there's a million Java books out there, and some people like some books over other books. Long story short, these are the two that I'm recommending, but they're not required. They're optional. Uh, one of them is really good. I think it's this one here, the Enterprise Java Computing Applications and Architecture. Very old book. <clears throat> it doesn't get into too much source code writing. Um, rather, instead, it's on core concepts having to do with Enterprise Edition and uh, networking, networking in Java in general. Hello. And uh, the first book up here, Developing Java Enterprise Applications, this is going to be outdated, and I believe it's probably not on the second edition anymore. It's probably going to be on the third or fourth or so. So these are just two recommendations, not requirements. You can get through the entire course using the Internet and no textbook at all. In fact, the Internet is a great source for additional information. Um, and I'll show you as we go through the course where to find a lot of stuff as well. This is what students are generally concerned with on the first day of class, grading. What am I going to be graded on? How am I going to pass this class? Uh, well, actually, it's the same structure as the weekday section, same assignments, actually, same course, really. Um, if you go out on the behacker.com website, you'll find it actually in the same location. Let me just bring that up for you real quick. Um, one of the uh, interesting things here, let me click on Spring 2011. See the Java EE course down here, actually right there. I click on that, and I go to the... Uh, you know, assignments link here. We're going to see a lot of little assignments. There's six of them. Going back to the syllabus so I can relate that to what you need for this course. There are six five-point programming, I shouldn't say programming, they're homeworks. So it's simple question answer stuff. And I'll go through actually the first projects today. And yeah, well actually we've gone, we would have gone through both, all three probably by the end of today, at the end of this weekend. So I might hem today, I might hem tomorrow. It's a two-day course, essentially. Um, <clears throat> these are easy. These are extremely easy. These are answering questions. Some of them are five questions, answering questions. It's not something to stress over. Where you're going to get your um, challenge is with the projects. The projects, there are four of them, and they're worth 10 points each, which is 40% of the course. 30% of the course is on that... Uh, little assignments that you've got, and they're no-brainers. 10% is on the CSLO essay. It's uh, not going to be um, a big assignment. It's going to be like a one- or two-page type of a writing assignment, an essay that you're going to have to write. And I don't have it out yet. I will make, I knew make a new one for each, each section here, and we're going to change it up a little bit, make it a little different. 
And the final exam is going to be worth 20% of the course grade. That will be the in-class final exam that will be given to you during the last weekend of the course, uh, which is for further down the road. <laughs> I think we end in May, but I'm not quite sure what the last weekend dates are. But before we leave on Sunday, I'll make sure I review the dates with you in terms of the next class meetings. All of the information and um, what I'm looking at in the room here is everybody's been here before. I recognize everybody, which is great. Uh, well, most of you. Uh, the people who are listening to the video may not be aware of this, especially if they're brand new and they're thinking, oh, we don't have to show. If you weren't here right in the beginning, you missed my lecture, my spill on required attendance. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, you will be showing next time. Uh, so if you haven't shown this time and you're interested in looking at the assignments, this is where you're going to get it in the course materials. You're also going to find in here, I don't have anything out yet um, in terms of uh, live class lectures. I'm going to put another box here for the weekend. So in the course here, it's for both sections is what I'm trying to say. And um, this is the weekday, and I probably will label it such, and then I'll put weekend underneath it. Probably won't be out till Monday or Tuesday. We'll have the video recordings uh, for this particular section. One of the things that is an assumption, uh, going back to the Java requirement, is that you're familiar with Java. Um, the, uh, I've made actually a couple of tutorials um, on installing the EE version. And the tutorials are using Microsoft Windows um, XP, actually. Um, I'm not a huge fan of 7. I don't know why. Probably because I have old computers and they all have XP on them. And XP seems to be running a little bit better in my Parallels virtual machine. Uh, so when I'm demo demoing stuff, Although I'm using a MacBook, I will be demoing it on an XP machine, um, which is going to be very similar to, uh, to Windows 7. Uh, but a long story short, um, if you follow the link here, I'll just click on it right now so you can kind of see what's going on here. You'll see the install. And this is going to be the install. Let me stop this so it doesn't actually run. This is going to be the install for the Java tools that you're going to need. Because uh, one of the first things you're probably going to want to do this weekend or right after this weekend is install the tools. If you have the JDK version, uh, or excuse me, the SDK from the regular old Java, core Java, you're not going to be enough. You actually have to install the Glassfish, and you'll need, need to install the EE version of it, uh, which would be a simple upgrade, actually, because if you already have the JDK on there, I would just recommend following through the tutorial. It's about, looks like about 47 minutes, uh, but it walks you through the whole thing. You set your computer up get what you need. It shows you which option to select and stuff like that. You don't need NetBeans for this course, but if you want to use NetBeans, you may. In fact, if you want to use anything you want, as long as it's in Java, you may. In any version of Java. Usually I get a couple people ask me on the first day, what version of Java do we need? You don't need the current version. If you've got an older version, that's fine. Um, if you've got a MacBook, you can actually get through the course on a MacBook. Uh, not the, the Oracle part of it uh, I would highly recommend MySQL instead of Oracle. Uh, but for the database component, the MacBook is a little bit harder to work with in terms of the Windows, only because to set the server and the client and everything all up on one computer, Windows actually, for some reason, is a little bit easier to configure. And I don't know, it just ends up being easier for some reason. Uh, because a lot of the, especially Oracle, is just now starting to be supported, uh, the Express version, I should say. Uh, putting a server on a MacBook is kind of odd to begin with, but uh, usually you would put a server on a Windows, uh, excuse me, on an NT box in the old days or a Unix server. You put it on a network uh, so people can connect to it. But when you're learning it, you're downloading and installing the Express version of it, you're putting it on a computer, you're putting it on a notebook computer or a desktop or something, uh, which lends itself to a slightly different programming environment, but it's the same. It's the same concept, it's the same thing. You're just deploying it differently. Long story short, if you'd like to use uh, MySQL, you may. If you have, and this is the interesting thing with JDBC, and you're going to notice this. In fact, this might even be a better learning experience for you. If you have a website and you have a MySQL database account, practically, if you have a Linux or a Unix compatible website, everybody, everybody gives you free MySQL. You, you probably have like five or six databases you probably never even used. And you probably have access through PHP admin or something. And find out from your web if, I mean, if you have a website, if you have a web space. If you don't, not a bad experiment as a CS student to actually sign up for, you know, $9, $10 a year, uh, sometimes free, 
The free accounts don't always come with database access, though. If you're looking for a company, and here's another good sales pitch. If you're looking for a company with really good, and this is what I use actually for behacker.com. If you're looking for a really good, reliable company that has a that has 24 hour a day, seven day a week support practically. Actually, every time I call them, they're there. I'm trying to type in GoDaddy. <laughs> Daddy, don't go, I can't type it. GoDaddy.com. These guys are great and they're cheap. Uh, so I've got my domain names, all my domain names, all my web service, everything through them. Uh, you can get, you know, you can come up with your own domain if you want to, your own .com or whatever. Uh, great hosting environment. I think I get like four or five gigs or something like that. I pay ten dollars a year, I think. I mean, it's cheap. It's extremely cheap. And uh, what you're looking at in terms of service is top notch. So I give these guys a sales pitch because they've been really good to me. <laughs> so it's GoDaddy.com. You don't have to, however. You can get throughout the class without actually deploying anything in a client server or an internet or networking environment. But if you're thinking about assembling or putting together a web server, um, hosting an application to actually take advantage of EE technology, you can get a hosting account that has MySQL's database, establish a database, create some tables there, and then create your Java JDBC application. And we're going to look at that uh, maybe tomorrow, but probably later today. Um, connect to that database and read the information and work at it from an application level, just like as if you deployed an application that, that the customer actually connected to your website and did stuff with. So it comes in handy for inventory control, for uh, customer service applications, for all sorts of different things. So JDBC is something that's currently being used actually all over the world, so it's not a bad thing to actually do live, like you know, put together. But you don't have to for the purposes of this course. You can install MySQL, you can install Oracle on your computer, Access it right there without actually leaving your computer. So, and you're going to be using localhost if that's the case. <clears throat> we will also be looking at server technologies like Apache, Glassfish, and JSP, and some of the servlets and things of that nature. And I'll go through that in the first lecture. Actually, this is just trying to get through the syllabus at this point. Uh, but just the recap on the concept here: all of the assignments, projects videos, everything as uh, you should be aware is going to be in this particular link here on the behacker.com website. If you've taken my classes before, this is boring because it's a repeat. And But the LMS will be populated soon. It is not currently populated right now. It might actually have the assignments in it, I believe. Yeah, it's not and the assignments are in there and the projects are probably in there, but the CSLO is not in there yet. Yeah, and the, the final exam won't be in there because it's in class, but the final exam scores will be in there. So what I'm actually doing at this point is I'm, I'm trying to video record the setup for teacher lectures to show the faculty how to set up the LMS. So the goal is uh, I'm going through it a little bit slower so that I can video record it. So within the next couple of weeks, it'll be set up. But, uh, and it'll be set up correctly <laughs> because I'll be recording it. <laughs> and it'll, be, it'll be populated. What, need, what it needs to go in there right now are the lectures and stuff like that, and the, the class setup. So. But the gradebook, I believe, is in there. So if you wanted to do the assignments, there's nothing holding you back. You can upload them. So, And everything, if you're brand new to the course or brand new to I2, everything does go into the LMS. Everything must be uploaded into the LMS by the deadline. I said the deadline for this course is May 1st. The semester actually ends on May 4th, uh, but May 1st is my deadline. I figured, you know, beginning of the month, you know, my 4th. I uh, but we're probably, well, we will definitely have our final exam before then. <clears throat> but May 1st is the deadline for this term for everything for all of my classes. So it's an easy day to remember, May 1st. It's kind of like the beginning of summer, I think, or I don't know, spring or something. I don't know. I don't know when spring technically, technically starts. I've already talked about attendance. Two of the three sessions, mandatory. Academic dishonesty, another thing that kind of seems to be a problem at every place I teach at, no matter where. The students come from, there's always academic dishonesty issues. Because it's the nature of being a student. You will find a ton of source code examples on the internet. You will find a ton of people who will be offering stuff to you. Don't take it. Do your own work. It's the only way you're going to learn, really. Um, you're only cheating yourself by copying something off of the internet. So It's like that old saying, you get out what you put in, kind of thing. So don't cheat. One of these days you're going to get caught. 
you know, that's not, that's not going to be fun. So, Actually, there was a couple of students, um, a handful of students who got caught cheating on the final exams, actually. Not a different class, not my class. Uh, but there were other students showing up to take exams for other students, you know, and they got, and they, oh, all of them are not very happy campers right now. I think that what ends up happening in that case, brand new rule, I think they get like a, no, no, no credit for anything they took the entire term, which means they basically have to repeat the entire semester over again. Not a good thing. But you guys sitting in here, you guys are good students, you're not going to cheese. The people listening to this video at home who didn't bother to show up to class today, who, uh, uh, possible, no, no, I'm not making any stereotypes, but it's the, usually it's not the group who shows up and who pays attention to what's going on, so it's usually the people who are trying to, trying to do the class without doing the class that end up having problems. Let's take a look at the uh, weekly schedule for a few minutes. This is not going to apply to you uh, because this is for the weekday section. However, what we can do is sort of divide this by three, actually divide it by two. It's better because the third weekend is just the final exam weekend. Um, and in the third weekend, you really only have to show up to one of the two days, which is good. So, so what do we have here? Today, after I get done with this syllabus, we are going to look at lecture number one, which is a really good, in my opinion, overview of client-server distributed architectures. It even gets into the design patterns, the EE, what it is, what all the different components are. And then it kind of concludes with an introduction to JDBC. We're going to follow it with a JDBC lecture, then we're going to look at JDBC source code examples. And then we're going to get into basic JDBC programming. We might probably end up having lunch before the programming part of it. And then when we come back, I'm going to, to skip JNDI. Instead, we're going to look at client-server technologies and get into TCP, IP, UDP concepts and programming, which it's not really on the schedule, but it's, it's part of this client-server programming technologies part. The background in IP, TCP, UDP is actually kind of important from a conceptual point of view um, because it kind of helps you understand a lot of the servlet stuff and the communication protocols and what's actually going on behind the scenes. Because uh, this is not like what, you know, an application plug and play. I'm not teaching you how to use an application. What I'm trying to teach you is um, EE concepts, which is enterprise. <laughs> so enterprise computing, networking. So this is partly a networking class, partly a pro Java programming class, partly an application development class. So it's kind of an all three hybrid. The next session, <coughs> and whatever we get through, we get through. And we have today and tomorrow, so we don't have to cover all of this stuff today. If we get through a lot today, I will probably end up getting into servlets tomorrow, along with JSP tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how that works. We'll look at distributed objects. We're probably going to hit RMI the second weekend. I seriously doubt I'm going to get down to week 11 today, because I have to also cover J JNDI as well. But that's kind of a small lecture. It's really not complicated as a concept. Next. Uh, next time we meet for the weekend session, we'll cover RMI Corba, Java Enterprise Beans, and that'll probably be enough for that weekend. So we're really going to take 15 weeks and split it out into two weekends, Saturday and Sunday, for both weekends, and then we'll get through all of it, no problem. And then, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to take it at a slower pace, listen to the week weekday lectures. So they're pretty comprehensive, so they'll be able to show you detail by detail. And it's the same lectures, the same slides. They're just done a little slower. <laughs> so, with a lot more examples probably as well. Because so, they don't have to be done in one weekend. So, Questions, comments, or concerns about this syllabus? Or something I didn't mention that I should have mentioned? I don't know. Now you guys are all repeat students, so or most of you are. If you're not a repeat student and I've made an assumption, you can catch me after or during the, one of the breaks or something. And we're going to try and take breaks as well. So Normally, I don't take too many breaks, but it's going to be a long day if we don't take any breaks. So We'll have a lunch break. We'll have a couple breaks from here and there. So No comments? No, no questions? Everybody's good with the syllabus? Good with the website? Good with the LMS? So all the rudimentary part of the first day of the class is taken care of. And I'm going to end this video and so we can start the next one with uh, 